Hello and welcome to another edition of Door County Today. I'm your host, Paul Renier of Door County Nature and Travel. Fall is in the air in Door County, one of the best seasons to explore this beautiful peninsula. Come with us today as we learn about American Folklore Theater, a professional musical and theatrical group that's like no other. We've been around now for 21 years. Uh, we grew out of an organization called the Heritage Ensemble. And then in 1990, it got switched over to a not-for-profit theater company called American Folklore Theater. In those early years, we were really just doing authentic folk songs rearranged in more of a complicated Broadway style. Both Fred Heidi and Fred Alley, who were co-founders of the theater company, were uh, huge participants in writing for the theater. So the the uh, programming came out of the people who were integrally involved in it. Fred, he had never really written a completely original show before. Most of the shows prior to that had been um, collected folk songs. So Fishing for the Moon was the first completely original show. Which is a, a nice, uh, you know, it's set in Wisconsin post-Civil War. Uh, we had a show called Northern Lights, which is all about the stump land and farmers trying to settle Wisconsin was sent out here from the east only to discover that the forest had been chopped down and there was no good farming. Um, we had shows like Belgians in Heaven which is what we call our metaphysical cheese curd polka musical. A show from, called Guys on Ice of course which is played all over the country. Um, some would consider it you know Wisconsin's sort of favorite musical. Um, so AFT shows have have kind of a, a unique voice because they came out of the company figuring out who it was and wanting to write for itself and for its particular audience. We also have a, a mission of trying to make our theater affordable because we really believe that um, because we write shows that are appropriate for people of all ages that they should be able to afford to come see them. The thing that was so special about AFT is the audiences. You know that uh, Fred always prided himself on the fact that a huge percentage of the audience never saw any other theater. This was the only theater they went to. They were not theater people. I think the other thing that defines us really solidly in the summer especially is this amphitheater. Um, you know, being out here in this grove of pine trees and with the natural wood for a stage, um, it, it's, it's, a, it's an experience. And a lot of people talk about we come to Door County in part to experience AFT and to be in the park and seeing the shows in the park. There's something astonishing and magical to do these shows out there where you really don't know what's going to happen. You know, nature really becomes the director of the show <laughs> and every night is different. Um, it's, it's windy or it's calm or the stars are out or it's, it's, it looks like it's going to rain or whatever it might be. There's something about just allowing that in to your performance experience that somehow feels um, more authentic. My writing partner, Dave Hudson, I had just met him and uh, we had heard of the tragic death of Fred Alley, the uh, artistic director at AFT, who had uh, been sort of the guiding light of the theater for a long, long time. Interestingly, Dave Hudson had contacted Fred Alley before he died and sent him some writing samples. And Fred uh, wrote him back a very gracious note saying, you know, you, you, you show great promise and please, you know, submit stuff when you write it. Dave pitched some ideas to me. Um, he, he had done good research. He sort of understood what AFT was and uh, he wanted to write something that was for our audience and for this space and you know, that's, they're smart guys. They, they figured it out real fast. We were the first team of uh, outsiders that they had, uh, had worked with in all the years of the theater, in the 20 some years they had been doing this. They're, they're part of the AFT family now, but you know, in spades. They've done five world premieres for us here. Musky Love, Cabin with a View. Cheeseheads, which was a huge hit uh, in the last couple of years. Main Traveled Roads, which won the Richard Rogers Award for Best American Musical. And Bing the Cherry Musical. We had never done anything set in a cherry orchard before, or, or having to do with, you know, having to do with cherries. So that was, a nat that was obviously a natural uh, springboard into talking about adapting the cherry orchard. The setting of Door County is perfect for it. So There's a wonderful song in Bing this year called I Never Thought About You, in which the two uh, lead characters talk about how they never thought about the other person. But of course, by the end of the song, we realize that they were completely obsessed with each other the whole time. And it's wonderful informing the audience of something that the 
that the characters themselves don't know. Paul really knows how to write a hook, a memorable melody, and uh, so all of the shows really have that quality. They're very infectious. Uh, we joke at AFT about how you know you can't get his songs out of your head. The crew goes home at night and they're singing in the shower. People cotton to the idea of coming out here and seeing something that's not been done anywhere else before. I think that makes them feel like they're part of something that they can't be a part of anywhere else. Jeff Coat. I'm a jeweler in Door County, Wisconsin. I've been here for 28 years. For seven years before that I did um, art fairs and I got tired so I moved to Door County. Needed to settle so this seemed like a good place. I wanted to make jewelry and I wanted to do it with as few tools as possible. Just a little saw and a torch and you know soldering uh, uh, things together. You know, there's, there's not really much involved as far as um, what you need to do it, but you need a lot of time, that's the thing. I may start four or five necklaces so I can, you know, draw them out, glue them on, drill the holes, saw a little of one, saw a little of another, so I can go back and forth. And it, it seems tedious, but I can break it up enough doing things in one area and then going to another area. So it, it really, it really, it works for me. I started out geometric and simple. Then I started to add a little bit of nature themes here and there. And then um, there are stones. I add stones. I work around stones. A lot of times I'll pick stones that look like nature to me and then I'll incorporate the design around it. They have to look like little paintings on their own. Sometimes I'll put the design over it so that the stone shows through the background and there's, there'll be a bird or a tree or something in the front and it looks like Door County. And you see some cranes out in the yard one day and it's like, okay, well, you know, there's something else I can add or dragonflies. And I don't know, it's just, just being here. You know, you walk out the door, there's the water and it's inspiring. I use sterling silver and different colors of 14 karat gold. I use, um, rose, yellow, green, and white gold. For every sterling silver piece there is an accent of 14 karat gold somewhere. And for every gold piece there is an accent of a different color of gold. Sometimes it's a major part of the design, sometimes it's just a little sun or moon or a star somewhere. There's a lot of mistakes you can make and so you have to be really careful. And that's the hardest thing. In the, the drawing the designs is fairly easy. The sawing is a breeze pretty much for me and um, the soldering's the next hardest part because green gold is very touchy and sometimes it decides to melt into the background and then you have a problem. So um, yeah, polishing would be the hardest part of my job I would have to say. I can mix it up. I can draw out a couple flowers, couple trees, couple you know birds and just out a little of one, a little of another, and a little of another, and go back and forth. So to me, it's not tedious. To everyone else who walks in my store, it looks like torture. I wanted to be a writer, and I wanted to be on one hand, and on the other hand, I wanted to do something in the arts field. But, you know, the writing part was kind of a secondary thing. I always liked art. It was kind of something I was around all the time, and I, I respected it and, and, and appreciated it. And I kind of thought right from the very beginning that it was the right thing for me to be doing. And then there came a point where I thought, okay, I want to make the, I want to step it up a little bit, not keep doing the same old simple things. And and so when I transitioned into doing more things with a the nature theme. I knew that was the right thing to be doing at the time and I left the geometrics behind and it's kind of, I guess I've always kind of known I was doing the right thing and doing the right thing with moving on and moving ahead and doing something different. 
Sometimes you'll hit on a, a design that you really like and you think, man, you know, how, how come it took me so long to figure that one out and boy, I should make more of these. But, you know, then you make another one that's similar, but it's not the same. Something has to be different. We don't like to repeat ourselves. Some winter I will wake up and something totally new will pop into my head and that'll be that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> When I make this jewelry, I want people to take home a piece of Door County. Something that when they wear it, they can look at it, you know, when they're in a stressful situation, in a traffic jam or something, and they can look at their ring and say, oh, I remember my two weeks in Door County and how peaceful and quiet it was. And, you know, just kind of have a, a, something that reminds them of something that was more quiet and more peaceful and pleasant. And, not the everyday hustle and bustle. So yes, I, I, know how, I know how lucky I am, truly. Every day when I drive to work and I drive past that big open expanse of water out there and see, you know, I, how beautiful it is. I, I am lucky. Hi, I'm Paul Renier with Door County Nature and Travel, and we're at Peninsula State Park at Eagle Terrace among the edge of the Niagara Escarpment. The Niagara Escarpment goes back about 425 million years when this rock was located in a warm, shallow sea closer to the equator. Over millions of years, Calcium-laden sediment compressed into this rock formation you see today. Through the movement of the plates of the earth, that once location near the equator is now 45 degrees north of the equator here at Door County. The dolomitic limestone that we see here today exposed is exposed in areas throughout the Midwest from Niagara Falls to the east and Door County to the west. Think of the Niagara Escarpment as a big bowl in the Midwest, where we are on the western edge of that bowl. The center of that bowl is the state of Michigan, and the eastern edge, Niagara Falls. In Door County, you can see the escarpment coming up over 150 feet over the Bay of Green Bay. Because there is a slight slope to this escarpment, by the time it reaches the lakeside of the county, Lake Michigan, the escarpment pretty much continues underneath the lake on its way beneath the state of Michigan and then re-emerging on the other side towards Niagara Falls. This terrace was once uh, used as a mining site for removing rock right from the face of the escarpment. The blocky nature of it made it a great building material. You know, it's already in block form and you'll see structures all over the place utilizing this they used all the native rocks. You know, you look at the early settlement of this country, a lot of the materials they used were the natural resources growing near or on the site that they were building or where they were building villages and homes and, and structures. They had to, they just, we didn't have the movement of products being natural or synthetic moving throughout the world like we do today. So a lot of it was basically materials that they could get right close by. You'll see some of the older structures in Door County, a lot of the basements and foundations are made of this dolomitic limestone. It's still a treasured uh, resource for fireplaces and uh, fence lines, and you'll see a lot of the masons and, and such collect these rocks from the old fence lines, the rock piles that you see that you know, were put there by the farmers clearing fields. Those are used for fireplaces and other types of uh, masonry projects. The dolomitic limestone, which makes up the Niagara Escarpment, was formed, as I said earlier, 425 million years ago in a warm, shallow sea. Layers upon layers of creatures, calcium carbonate and, and, and calcium compressed layers and layers and layers, hundreds of feet of layers of rock, therefore creating a sedimentary rock over periods of millions of years. A feature of the dolomitic limestone we have in Door County, the vertical cracking, as evidenced right here, and the horizontal layering. 
Dolomitic limestone is a fine-grained rock that is very resistant to weathering. Weathering of the elements of wind and rain and other elements like glaciers that passed through here uh, up until about 10,000 years ago. Over time, vegetation starts to grow on the faces of the escarpment. And in particular, certain species of plants love this type of habitat, including a whole mirage of lichens that are on the surface and also certain organisms that live actually in the rock between the grains. The larger plant life includes the eastern white cedar. It's believed and has been studied that some of these trees in Door County are over 600 years old. And in other parts of the escarpment, they're over 1,000 years old. Even though they could be a thousand years old, some of these trees are only about five to six inches in diameter. Due to the harshness of the environment on the, the face of the escarpment, the lack of water, possibly the lack of sunshine, lack of nutrients, life is very rough. But these plants just show their determinations to survive and have survived here for hundreds of years, going into over a thousand years for some of the northern white cedar. For more information about Door County and its beautiful natural features, visit www.doorcountytoday.com. I'm Julian Victor Hagen. I'm a fourth generation Washington Islander. Um, musician at heart, but I also um, struggle to make a living on the island also, like many others. Um, uh, I grew up here through the 70s and 80s, and um, music has always been a main staple of my life, whether from a, um, a creative force or a social um, interactive uh, venue. It's always been something that's really been prominent in my life through my family upbringing, through um, my relationships with friends, um, it still is, but for sure. And within the structure of the island, music has always been something that's been going way back to the 1800s, 1900s, of course, um, in small towns, especially as remote as this one, um, there wasn't a whole lot to do, of course, so music was always one of the main things. And it, it um, certainly brought people together um, for all the right reasons, and it still is happening here on the island. Laughing and dancing, yet tears in my eyes. I've watched the northern lights dance in the sky to a simple freedom song. Twisting and turning, yet calm all around. They've made my feet never touch on the ground. Yes, they've made me dance along. Because we'll never have this time to live again. So why not live it up while we can? For there's less time than before And I don't know how much more But I know we'll never have this time again Fresh smell of wood smoke invading my mind Makes me remember all the good times that I've spent here with my friends Talking and dreaming of what we could be If we could just find out life's simple key To make it never end Because we'll never have this time to live again so why not live it up while we can? For there's less time than before And I don't know how much more 
but I know we'll never have this time again because we'll never have this time to live again so why not live it up while we can for there's less time than before and I don't know how much more but I know we'll never have this time again People, for whatever reason, I've noticed this up here maybe more than the county, that people come up here, um, they're more willing, maybe because of the, they, they're just more willing to open up and talk about their life. Uh, I've found that they love to sit and pretty soon the circle that, of chairs expand and just encompass people that are sitting there. And if they want to be involved or contribute in conversation, they're welcome. And it's, I've not seen this as much in the county, nothing personal, but I, I think this is just very cool. And by the way, if you're wondering um, what this beautiful building is here in the background or during the song that I sang, this is the boathouse on Rock Island State Park. And this is a state park that I believe is about 900 acres. It's, you catch a ferry boat from the mainland of Washington Island, and then you catch another smaller boat with, for about a 10 minute ride over to this island. And it is, again, like Washington Island, and it's one of the best kept secrets. It's a beautiful park. Uh, there are approximately 32 campsites, I believe, here, you can, and it's um, like stepping back in time. And I think he, again, I think um, you would be pleasantly surprised and be moved by the beauty of this place and what you would find here. So um, I hope you'll come and contribute to the, the pond of life here. We need some fresh water, and I think you would get something um, very rewarding back out of it also. Hope to see you here. Thanks for joining us today. Remember to come back often to find out more about Door County's history, landscapes, businesses, and people. I'm Paul Renier for Door County Today. See you next time.